The starting point for almost all design research projects is that there are some people who are engaged in certain activities and these people, they experience some problem that hinders them from doing what they would like to do in their activities. So they would like to have some kind of solution to their problem. And one kind of solution is a new artifact that needs to be designed and developed. So in this presentation, we will look more deeply into the notions of practices and problems and see how they are related to artifacts. This figure just repeats what I said earlier. There is some practice and inside that practice there are people. These people experience or perceive some problem. They would like to have a solution and a possible solution is an artifact. All of this is quite straightforward. Uh, the main issue here in this figure is what can be meant by a practice. Practices are patterns of activities. They are about organizing human activities in such a way that they hang together in a meaningful and coherent way. And here are three examples of practices. The first one is cooking, where people cook meat and fish and vegetables and other food. And in this, they use various kitchen utensils, such as pans and knives and stocks. Transport is another practice. People move themselves and various physical objects using vehicles such as cars and bicycles. The third practice here is Christmas, where people celebrate the holiday. They greet each other, they get presents, they eat special food and so on. What is common to all of these practices is that the activities in them are meaningfully organized. They form some coherent whole, they fit together with each other. I've talked a lot about meaningfulness and meaningful activities and meaningful practices, but what does it mean and where does meaning come from? Well, one way is that meaning comes from the outside. In such cases, we talk about purposive practices. These are practices that provide value to its environment. For example, a company that produces cars and sells them to customers that use these cars. Another way is that meaning comes from inside. These are self-contained practices they provide value only to its participants. For example, a game that is fun to play and it's very interesting for the participants, but not very fun for anyone else. So the meaning comes from the inside. And of course, there are many practices that combine these two elements of purposive and self-contained practices. When people engage in practices, they might sometimes experience problems, practical problems, and they want that typically to solve these problems, that is to move from an undesirable state where the problem exists into a desirable state where the problem doesn't exist anymore. Here is once again the Here is once again this figure showing a person who is engaged in a practice where he perceives or experiences some problem. And the question is then, what is a problem? What does it mean to perceive a problem? Here is a definition. A problem is a gap between the present state and a desirable state as it is perceived by participants in a practice. So you are in some undesirable state and you want to move away from it 
into a desirable state. Here are some examples of problems. In a cooking practice, it may be the case that vegetables become unevenly cooked, while it would be desirable that they were evenly cooked. So this is a gap be between a current state and a desirable state. So there is a problem. In a transport practice, it may be the case that people moving people is too slow, while it would be desirable that moving people were fast. In a Christmas practice, it may be today that people are stressed at Christmas, while it would be more desirable that people are relaxed. And in all of these cases, we have a gap between an existing present state and future desirable state, and these constitute problems. Some problems are worse than other problems. And one of the worst kinds of problems is the wicked problem. And these are problems that are difficult or impossible to solve due to incomplete knowledge, due to changing requirements over time, contradictions in these requirements, and a complex interplay between some problems. These are problems that don't have any final solution. You can go on forever and ever and try to improve, but you never completely solve them. And it's often also difficult to tell when you have solved them. You can always improve a bit more. Some examples on a societal level are high unemployment and high criminality. In almost all societies, these problems exist and they persist forever and no one really knows what to do about them, at least no one knows what to do to completely solve these problems. The opposite of wicked problems are tame problems. These are problems that can be stated with all the information needed for understanding and solving them. You know when you have completely solved them and it is possible to actually solve them. For example, we could have sorting a list. It's easy to tell when you have succeeded in that, or building a bridge, or repairing an engine. These are problems that are much easier to address, to solve, and to know when you have solved them. So far, I've been talking about problems as if the current state in itself was bad or unsatisfactory and we needed to move away from that unsatisfactory situation but in some cases it's rather like that some new technologies or some other factors allow us to do something completely new and much better then it might be better to talk about opportunities rather than problems for example, when X-rays were discovered, we suddenly got the ability to look inside the body. It wasn't the case that the current state was in itself bad, but there were new, much better states enabled by this technology, enabled by this opportunity. So, what should we do if there is a problem in a practice? What should we do about it? Sometimes it's not possible to do anything about it. We just have to live with it, keep calm and carry on. But in many cases, it's possible to design and develop some artifact that can help us to solve or at least address the problem. And this is also the definition of an artifact. It's an object made by humans with the intention that it be used to address a practical problem. Artifacts come in many different forms. There are physical artifacts, such as scissors or hammers or airplanes. There are also more abstract artifacts, like recipes or algorithms or drawings. There can also be social artifacts, such as money or government or, or laws. What's common to all of these different kinds of artifacts is that 
they help people to solve the problems they experience in their practices.